listen to them one more time and say, God got a word for me. Amen. Because God is going to speak to us today. I want to continue on that topic of uncommon favor. But the title today is, What is Uncommon Favor? We know about favor. We know um, we can get favor in many ways. But there is a difference between favor and uncommon favor. Before we look into any scripture, let me, let me first say this to you. Today, there are three types of favor that we're going to look at. And I must let you know that we need these three, three types of favor in our lives in order for us to become all that God will have us to be. Second thing I want to say to us is, favor does not come upon everyone even though it's available to anyone. Can I say that again? Favor does not come upon everyone, even though it's available to anyone. What does that mean? Everyone upon the face of the earth f have access to favor. But the problem is, not everyone upon the earth accesses that favor. So today we're going to focus on three types of favors. And, and, and if you were not in the first service, I want to plead with you to please get the tape because I'm continuing from where Pastor Uchi left off. Pastor Uchi, thank you. He did a great job this morning. Could we appreciate him one more time? Please, let's appreciate him. In the book of Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, we're going to look at the favor of man. The favor of man. Exodus 2.15. This is after Esther had prepared herself and, 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 and make herself ready to go before the king because the king was looking for a wife. His first wife got out of order and out of hand. And, 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 and all of the senators and the representatives in the in the house, came to the king and said, listen, your wife was out of order. And if you don't do something about her, you are the king. All of our wives are going to follow suit and we're going to have hell on earth. So you better do something. Now, this, this is the, the, the representatives and the senators in the house talking to the king. They said to him, you better do something with this woman that you have that disrespected you in the presence of everybody. Because if you don't, now men, I'm not telling you to go take action against your wife if she disrespects you. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what the Bible tells us. So they came because sometimes, you know, we have friends that will try to tell us what we must do in our own home. And sometimes their advice is not godly. Please understand godly and ungodly. There's a difference. But they came to the king and they said, your wife is out of order. So you better do something with this woman. Because if you don't do something, Pastor Uchi wife. <laughs> Pastor Thomas wife. Pastor Sam wife, Elder Ibe wife, Brother Tim wife, and everybody that's married in Congress, their wives are going to follow suit. So the king got rid of his wife, but he was a smart man because he understood that the Bible said it was not good for a man to be alone. So he, 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 he get all of his counselors together and say, okay, you all make me get rid of mine. You all better find, help me to find one I, I, because I don't want to be alone. So all these women came and they get themselves together and they parade before the king. But something special happened with Esther. And the Bible tells us in, in, in verse 15, Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter 
of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai. So Esther and Mordecai were cousins. But Esther, after the death of her father, a Mordecai rather, took Esther in like a daughter. And, and, and was come, her turn had come for her to go on to the king. The Bible says she required nothing but what Haggai, Haggai, sorry, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the woman appointed. But look at this. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of them that look upon her. So in other words, Esther obtained favor of man. One favor we need in our life if we are going to become all that God has us to be, is the favor of men. Because when Esther obtained the favor of the men, or all the people who saw her, Esther was appointed as the wife of the king. And therefore, she was able to stand in the gap and deliver her people because there was a, a decree sent out to wipe out all the Jews. So because of her obtaining favor, she was able to stand as a mediator or a deliverer for her people. But that favor did not come from God. Who, Pastor Sam, what are you saying? Who did she find? Put the scripture back up for me, please. Who did the Bible say she found favor in? In the sight of all them that look on her, that was man. So we need the favor of man in order to become and to fulfill all that God have us to, to thank you, sir. All that God have us to do and all that God have us to be. Now we're going to look at another favor, favor of man. In the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. After the children of Israel was in bondage and their time had come for them to be delivered from bondage. <laughs> Here what the scripture said where God was talking to them. He said, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders which I do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people, speaking of the children of Israel, favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when he go, he shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and, and of her that sojourn in her house, jewels of silver, jewels of gold, raiment, and, and he shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and he shall spoil the Egyptians. Look at what happened here. If we go back, go back to the first, the, the first verse. He said, and I will stretch out my hand, and I will smite the Egyptians, and with all my wonders which I do in the midst thereof, and after that, he will let you go. Next verse. And I will give this people favor. That's the favor of God. That is God speaking. God is saying, I will give this people favor in the sight of their enemies. And what did God give them favor with? With wealth and riches. So they were able to finance their journey to the promised land. And not only just to finance their journey, um, but as they continue on uh, going towards the promised land, the Bible make it plain that as they, as they fought in wars, they took the spoils of their enemy. So this, this favor that God had given them was wealth. We need the favor of God in our life, not just for wealth, but to live. So we need the favor of man and we need the favor of God. But there is another favor which I want to stress on today. And this favor is called uncommon favor. This favor is the favor that propels a person into being all that God has them to be and to obtain all that God has for them. If you would please turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Now after Jesus Christ... Um, let me back up a bit. Jesus Christ had went along with, at the age of 12 with his family to Jerusalem for to worship. And what happened, Mary and Joseph and the crowd of people that were heading back home, um, they, were, they were like a knitted family. So something happened and they noticed they didn't see Jesus going back home with them. So they began to ask among the company, did you see Jesus? Did you see Jesus? They said no. So they went back uh, to Jerusalem and they found him in the temple. 
And as Jesus was in the temple, the Bible said he was listening and then asking questions of the scribes and Pharisees, the well-educated and well-learned people. But when they approach him, they say, son, what is the matter? We thought you were with us. How come you stayed back? Jesus turned to them and said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? And listen to me, children. That doesn't mean that you must go around and be rude to your parents and tell them you got to do God's business and you go do what you want. You see, you see, sometimes we take scripture and we misunderstand scripture and we run with it. Because Jesus did it, I can do it too. No. I mean, if mommy tell you, daddy tell you it's time for bed, you don't want to tell them I'm up studying and I'm, 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 I, need to, I need to find out what God will is for me. To obey is better than sacrifice. Because um, what might be coming after those words, you might not be very happy, kids. Because um, obedience is better than sacrifice. But nevertheless, even though Jesus said to them, I must be about my father's business, did you notice what he did after? He did not stay there with the scribes and Pharisees. He got up and he went with them in obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. But then the Bible tells us something as, as, as it, it, the scripture continued in that chapter 2. In 52 it said, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This is uncommon favor. The first one we look at, they obtained favor, uh, Esther obtained favor of man. The next scripture we look at was where the children of Israel obtained favor of God. But uncommon favor is when the both favors combine. We cannot survive just with the favor of God. If that was the case, Jesus would have never gone in favor with man. He would have just gone in favor with God. Notice the Bible didn't say he grew in favor only with man. There was a combination of both God's favor and man's favor that came upon Jesus Christ. And, the, and, and you know what I noticed with this favor? Anybody see a key word in that scripture? Put the scripture back up for me, please. There is a key word in this scripture. Can anybody tell me what it is? Who just said that? That's the key word in all this scripture. The Bible said, and Jesus increased the level of favor that was upon his life. He did not stay at one level. Woo! That makes me feel good. You know why it makes me feel good? Because the favor I experienced yesterday come tomorrow or today. I can get greater favor than I had before. Woo! Because you know why? The person I was yesterday, I'm not supposed to be that person today. Where I was yesterday, I'm supposed to be higher today. I'll come tomorrow, I'm supposed to increase. But in order for that to happen, the favor of God and man must increase in my life. Some of us are just settling for the favor that we have right now. Oh, 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 oh. Some of us are even getting so spiritual with it. Once God favor me, I don't care about nobody. I want you to reconsider that thought. Because the favor of man is as equally important in our life as the favor of God for us to be all that God will have us to be. So what is uncommon favor? Uncommon favor is when the favor of God meets the favor of man upon a man's life. That's uncommon favor. I could done preach. I could just stop preaching right now. That's uncommon favor. Let us get off our spiritual high and think that all I need is Jesus. You lie. You lie, 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 lie. Lie, lie, lie. This is not true. You hear people say, all I need is you, Lord. You lie. That's a lie. Because if all you need was Jesus, he would, after he saved you, he would have taken and put you somewhere isolated where you don't need man. So please don't sing that song. Because it's not biblical. 
And as we have been hearing our senior pastor teach over and over, God created us for relationship. Can you have a relationship with yourself? People, <laughs> that's, the, that's sign of insanity. Yeah? If, you th if we think we can have a relationship with ourselves, that is signs of insanity. And none of us here is insane. Somebody say amen. amen. But we need the combination. And why do we need the combination? Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and 23. Lamentations chapter 3. Look at this. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new. That word mercy is the same word that is used for favor. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What is that telling me? That every day I wake up in the morning, I need new favor. And that new favor cannot be the same favor that I had yesterday because it will not be new. Ah, my, the favor of God and man must increase in my life daily. I beg you, get the tape from this morning because Pastor Uchi tell, taught us how to obtain the favor of God in our lives. So please get the tape. Please, I beg you. But the combination, is, is, it, is like, it is like someone making uh, uh, um, Kool-Aid. I think everybody knows what Kool-Aid is. Although I get, I told my wife, don't ever bring that in my in our house. I think I've said this here before, because I grew up on Kool Aid. <laughs> Pastor Gloria, that's the days when we didn't had no hope. Kool Aid was the thing, and to make it worse, it was at one point we used to do something we call sugar water. You all know what sugar water is? See, some of you know nothing about sugar water because you're, you're, you're all born and grown in a palace. My daughter, some years ago, Samantha, when she was much younger, both her and mommy um, went to Trinidad on a vacation. And my daughter, they called me and we were talking, and my daughter is excited, excited. Daddy, daddy, guess what I had? Sugar water. And I'm saying to myself, God bless this child. Because if only she knew what sugar water really represents. You all know don't what sugar water is. Let me tell you what sugar water is. You get water. You put sugar. You, you, do, you dissolve the sugar. That is sugar water. That is something I depended on when I was a little boy. Sugar water and Kool-Aid. And here is my daughter who has the opportunity to drink pure juice. And she's excited about sugar water. She brought back memories of suffering in my life. <laughs> I had to say, God bless this child. She do not know. Like Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Lord, forgive Samantha. She don't know what she's reminding me of. Sugar water. But it, yeah, it was good. It did something. But God knows there was something called orange juice. Pineapple juice. Which was better, but it did me good. A lot of people have diabetes in Trinidad today because of that sugar water. But, but, but it's, 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 it's a new favor every morning that we need in our lives because that which was from yesterday is not sufficient and enough for today. And when tomorrow comes around, I must find myself in the place to obtain favor that is new that morning. Because the Bible said they are new every morning. And, not, and, and look what they're going to say. Great is thy faithfulness, meaning that I can depend on you every morning for new. You all don't understand this thing, this God is God. Huh? We, the God that we depend upon for mercy every morning is a faithful God that cannot fail and will never lie to you. He will never disappoint us. 
They are new every morning. We just need to find a way to tap into that new mercy. Or if I can put another word in there, that new favor. Jesus increased in favor. He did not stay at the same level. Why are we satisfied with what we got? When God is saying, don't you know I got more for you? Because you don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. It's high time our minds be changed and transformed and understand that where we are, there is a lot more in God for us. God wants to give it to us. But if we don't conceive this thing in our mind, you know what is going to happen? We will just be at one point trusting and believing God that we are there and we have arrived only to find out that the glory of God has departed from where we are and God is somewhere downtown Boston. Because it's every morning his mercies are new. His favor is new every morning. So when his favor should have had us downtown Boston, we are still in Brockton. Because we are all content. God bless me with a car. Oh, God favor me and that's it. And, 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 and the, the, every morning we wake up is frustration of mind. Wondering where the next meal or the next this or the next that. Or how am I going to face this? How am I going to do this? The new mercy every morning should keep our heart and our mind in Christ. Benefits of this favor. This uncommon favor. Benefits of it. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Ooh, I think I'm going to finish. I make record today. I might finish preaching early today. Woo. Hebrews chapter 12. Look at this. In Hebrews 11, it gave you a history of, of the hall of, fam hall of famers that had faith. Everybody that were outstanding in the Bible that had faith. Hebrews chapter 11 give you a record of their life. The author of the book of Hebrews, which the scholars are not too certain who wrote it. Some say it's Paul, some say it's Luke. They're not sure. They're not sure. But the author of the book of Hebrews jumped into chapter 12 after telling them, listen, look at all these people. Faith. Take an example. Look at them. They are great people. They had accomplished great things. But look at what chapter 12 says. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, seeing that we have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, 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 and all these great people of faith. I want you to understand something. Lay us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it easily beset us. It's, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Go ahead. Looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're going to look at four key things in that verse that, 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 the, that favor, the, the uncommon favor can do for you. One, it sets us apart from all others. Because Jesus had favor with God and man, he obtained the ability to do all that God had for him to do. And the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, even though I just told you about all these Hall of Famers, you must understand your, your perfect example. The one you must look to is none of them. You know why? All of them failed at some point in time. Abraham, who probably was the number one that were mentioned about Hall of Faith, Hall of Faith, when his wife couldn't have a child, he listened to her and gone and take another woman and get a child. And today we have all this chaos in the world because of the Muslim people. That's Ishmael's race. Mm -hmm. 
So even Abraham failed. Who else should I talk about? You can look at each and every one of them. Jacob, Joseph, man of faith. What was his problem? He talked too much. He couldn't keep his mouth shut when God revealed things to him. So his brothers became so angry with him. Sometimes we talk too much. We talk too much. But after hearing of, but, but even though he was yet a great man of God. Abraham. The man got to the point that he took his son to sacrifice him. How much he trusted in God. That which he had believed God for all his life. And as he was about to sacrifice him, if we don't know the story, God stopped him and said, look, take that lamb over there. Now I know you really fear me. You, you, your heart is with me. So could you imagine, after hearing of all the Hall of Famers, he turned to them and said, your perfect example is none of them. Your perfect example is Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus for your perfect example. Why? The Bible says he knew no sin. There was no sin found in him. He said, the prince of this world and find it nothing in me. The prince of the world is the devil. And he couldn't find not one fault in Jesus. So, he, so, so the author of the book of Hebrews was telling the Hebrews, look to Jesus. So what, 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 one of the first things we must understand that, that this uncommon uh, favor due to us is that it set us apart from all others. Though they were great, though Abraham, all of them were great, Jesus Christ was exalted above all of them as our perfect example. So it sets us apart. Number two, it, says it gives you enduring power. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. This uncommon favor will give you the ability to endure. No matter what come your way. If we can only understand what Jesus went, to, went through. One day he marching into Jerusalem and they're celebrating him. Hail king of the Jews. And they, oh, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Next time you see them cruci crucify him. The same people that celebrated him. The same people that say crucify him. But that favor that he obtained, the Bible say, he, for, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. That favor is what Jesus had in his life that gave him the ability to endure. Because favor, I, I, I was looking in my studies, I come to find out favor and grace, the words are used interchangeably. And in, in some scripture, not all, they have the same meaning. And that same favor, which the same grace, um, it means the, 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 the ability, the inner, inability that is within a man that helps him to become or, and to do all that God have him to become and to do. And you see that by his actions. That is what that means. So, so, so they are used interchangeably. So, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So, the favor of God gives you the ability to endure. Number three. It makes you strong that shame don't destroy you. It Bible, the scripture says there, he dis, despising the shame. What does that mean? He didn't let the shame of being naked, the shame of being spat upon, the shame of standing out as the one and only that could die for the sins of man. It, do you think Jesus had a pleasant crucifixion? You see, they have Jesus up on a cross and they have him covered. No baby, no baby. Let's read the scripture and get understanding and forget all this foolishness that they are trying to paint in our mind. The Bible said that they, they, they parted his garments and for his vestures they cast lots. He was naked. 30 something year old man. All he had was exposed. You want to tell me that in shame? you have a son, you know from the 
I have younger brothers, lots of nephews and stuff. From the time you see they hit five, they want to they want to cover up because they get understanding that hey, not everybody's supposed to see this. They expose everything Jesus had. It was the worst death anyone could die. That's the way the Romans and they used to kill criminals. If you're a murderer, you're a rapist, you commit crimes beyond the thought of mankind. That's, that's the way they used to punish you. Today we might get in, in Massachusetts, they get life in prison. In some states, you get, they, they, you get death by either injection, the electric chair, or by gas. And that is considered the ultimate death for a criminal that have done notorious things. That is the type of death Jesus innocently. That is what made it even more shameful. The Bible says he knew no sin. He that knew no sin for, for us, he became sin itself. Why was he able to endure that? Why was he able to, to put aside the shame? Because of the favor of God and the favor of man combining. Giving him the ability to endure. The next one. And this is, ooh, you will never get to this level, um, the next one, until we go through all these others. This benefit we're going to talk about will never come unless we go to benefit number one, benefit number two, and benefit number three. If we don't know how to be set apart, if we don't know how to, to, end, to, to, to endure, if we don't know how to, to be strong in shame, this one we could never have. And they say it gives you your right place in God. And not just your right place, your right reward. Look at this thing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured a cross, despising the shame. And where is he? He is set down at the right hand of the, of, of the throne of God. <laughs> Do you know, if Jesus didn't have the combination of favor with God and man, he would have never be able to endure the cross and to sit on the right hand of the Father. If it is for us, let me, let me reverse. If it is that Jesus needed the favor of God and man combined in order to be exalted and seated on the right hand of the Father, do we think we're going to get to heaven without it? Listen, this favor is available to us every day. Every day. His mercy is new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. I can depend upon him no matter what. You could chop my hand off tonight. In the morning I wake up, that mercy is still available to me. Brand new. You poke my eyes out. The morning I wake up, that mercy is new. It gives me the strength so if you want to poke the other eye out, I'm going to still keep the faith. This is what this favor does. But the ultimate thing this favor of God does is bring each and every one of us to the fullness. Do you know if Jesus didn't endure, and if he didn't have the favor of God and man, and man combined, he would have never be exalted and seated on the right hand of the Father. Some of you will tell me, but Pastor Sam, you're talking about God. <laughs> you know, we are so deep, spiritually, I mean really deep. It's like we can't touch the, the bottom of the ocean deep we are. That many of us always want to talk about how Jesus was God and Jesus was God. But we do not like to admit the fact that he was man. 100%. Do you know the life that Jesus lived was the life that God intended for Adam and Eve? But Pastor Simon, you're talking lie. Adam and Eve was tempted, Pastor Uchi. And what did they choose to do? Sin. The Bible says he was in all points tempted like as we were. 
yet without, he chose not to sin. <laughs> when God made Adam and Eve, he didn't make them sinful. He made them without sin. It was a choice. Jesus chose not to sin. Didn't he say, don't you know, I could have called on my father and he would have sent 10,000 angels to deliver me from this army? If he had done that, do you know what would have happened to us? But the favor of God and man that combined gave him the strength that he needed to say, angels, ah, not today, maybe another day, but... He said, my, he, when, when, when he was traveling and he stopped at, the, at Samaria. And here comes a woman. No, she was there already. Sorry, I don't want to. The woman at the well. And after talking with the woman and the woman got saved, sanctified. And she went back and told the people. They came. They said, listen, we know you're a prostitute. You messed up. You, we know you're dirty. We ain't so believe it. Let's go see this man for ourselves. Your testimony, we can't trust. So they went and they said, Jesus. And after seeing him, they say, ah, your words are true. Look at what happened after that. Here comes his disciples because they went to buy bread. And they come to offer him food. He said, no, I'm fine, I'm full. They asked among themselves, who in the world gave him food? Because we went to buy food and nobody there had food. Number one, what is he doing talking to this Samaritan woman? We are Jews. We don't deal with those people. They wanted to feed him. Jesus turned to them and said, hey, you all don't know. You all don't know how full I am. You all don't know how satisfied I am. While you are running down after filet mignon and, 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 and caviar and, and some Popeyes or some KFC or, or some, 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 some kind of macaroni and cheese. He said, say, my meat, my food, my satisfaction is to do the will of him. While it is, because the night cometh when? Listen. The favor of God and man combined in Jesus' life is what gave him the ability to do all that he did. We think Jesus could not sin. Please understand, there was opportunity to sin. Once you are tempted, that means you have the opportunity to sin. He chose not to, but that doesn't mean he could not have. One time I was having an argument with my eldest brother. God bless him. And I was telling my brother, do you know Jesus had to go to school and learn? He said, what are you talking about? How are you going to say that? <laughs> Jesus had to go to school. How are you going to say that? <laughs> when somebody's ignorant, they're ignorant. And when I say ignorant, I don't mean have a temper, I mean unlearned. According to the Jewish customs, especially in those days, it was the duty of the firstborn son to follow in the footstep of the father. And I'm not talking about heavenly father. I'm talking about earthly father. Why do you think they call him the carpenter's son? And why do you think they call him the carpenter? Because he had to learn carpentry. He had to learn the trade of Joseph. Joseph was his father in that, at that point in time. So it was the custom of the day that the firstborn must carry on the trade of the father. So he was learning carpentry with Joseph. He had to go to school and learn the custom and the traditions of the people. So all of you that think you don't need school, you're going to be a knucklehead. Because you want to tell us that Jesus didn't go to school, so you don't need to. All right, don't go. You're going to be recycle, recycling bottles and cans. That will be your profession. Because we, like I said before, we quick to take the scripture and turn it to please ourselves. You better go to school and get an education. Because there ain't no room for fools in this world. Not in God's kingdom. Do not be a fool. He 
Ain't nothing wrong in learning. Do you know why a lot of Christians today are struggling? Because they don't want to learn. They think faith is everything. Oh Lord, that's another one. That's another message by itself. Ain't nobody could believe God like Christian people. And they don't ever get. Can I tell you the truth? In love. In love. This thing we call faith is not faith, you know. This thing we call faith is not faith. You know you can't afford it. You go buy it. And then when the bill comes, you have hell. And you say, but God, but God, I trust you. Trust God what? The Bible says, no man build a tower until he first sit down and come to cause. If you can't afford it, leave it alone. The favor of God and man will come upon us as we walk in God's will. Not out of his will. I am telling you what I have done. And come to, come to realize how stupid I was. Putting myself in position and then praying to God to provide and supply. And then I realized, but wait. Samuel, you're a fool. I'm talking about myself. I ain't talking about nobody. <laughs> Let me talk about me because I don't want nobody to stone me. Then I realized, but wait a minute, boy, how stupid can you be? That you go and do something you can't afford to do and then expect to trust God? Why didn't you trust God before? We put faith only when we get into problems. But faith is supposed to guide us. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. Put faith up front. So that major mistakes and many mistakes we will avoid. Take faith and combine it with the, the, uh, the uncommon favor. And we will see how our lives will be different. Let us not be fools. The devil is out to deceive us. He's out to trick us and make us look as though we, we, we don't know what we're doing. But we are the people of God that has the favor of God and man upon our lives. We have the uncommon favor. Let us make use of that uncommon favor. Every morning it's new. When we wake up in the morning, one of the first things should come out of our mouth is God. I thank you for, the, for, for, for your mercy is new today to me. Because every morning, he says, new every morning. I used to hear people quote that scripture and I never knew where it was. So I didn't used to believe them. So I decided, Pastor Thomas, so much people are quoting this thing. Let me go and look for it, Pastor Gloria. When I look, I found it. I said, but wait, they're in line. It's every morning this thing is new. So I understand that I must make use of this new thing that's available to me every day. Could you stand to your feet? I want you to join hands with the person next to you. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit us at Fountain of Grace, 427 Turnpike Street, Canton, Massachusetts, 02021. Or give us a call at 781-821-1111. To one. Or feel free to give us an email at admin at fountainofgracebos.org or visit us at our website at www.fogbos.org.